I, I can converse properly and socially with, with charisma, too. It's considerably more sociopathic the way I am. <laughs> yeah! Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Well, Jesse, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we've got the eighth album coming soon, about a month away as we're talking. Uh, yeah. e exciting times. Um, let's just go straight into this because there's so much to unpack on this album. There's a lot going on. Uh, a lot has happened with the band as well. And I want to come back to all of those things soon. Let's just go straight into uh, one of the most, you know, standout songs for me, which is Love Letter. Um, yeah. Where basically you are yelling at us that, you know, you're congratulating us for basically being sheep and listen or listening to everything else that everybody else is doing. Uh, it almost sounds as if you are telling us that, hey, if you don't like this, you just don't get it. Is that maybe even a way of, of understanding it properly or what's going on? Or is that what I'm saying? <laughs> That's part of the fun, ultimately, of that song, is there is a whole bunch of different, pretty powerful statements that I feel most people can relate to in some degree or another, and mm -hmm. it all depends on how they're interpreting it. And I've made a conscious point of not explaining what we mean by any of those statements for the sake of not... Uh, shattering anyone's illusions, and also, maybe that was the point all along. There's an anger in this record that um, maybe even more in our face than, than, than what we've seen from you guys in the past. Um, and, um, uh, and, and maybe I am just putting my truth onto what you're doing uh but what jumps out are you know dealing with or failing at dealing with isolation um health issues mental health issues you know stand out um is this meant as a storyline because you do take the, the the listener throughout the album on quite the roller coaster i want to come back to that but mm -hmm. is it is it is it somebody's experience that we're following, or is is there not really a linearity? Oh, there's very much uh, someone's experience that we're following, and that someone is me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the exception of one of the song's lyrics, uh, the tie was entirely Scott's writing. Okay. Um, but. The rest of the album is, I think, all my words. And most of the music was also written by me in periods where we weren't allowed to get together with anyone. We mm -hmm. were in lockdown, like from 20, March 2020 through May 2021 in Manitoba, we were basically trapped for a good nine months, which wasn't the best of times. No. Particularly when you built uh, very strategic methods of managing your own clinical depression for the most part your entire adult life. And when those have come crumbling down, how do you deal with the onslaught of the shit that you're dealing with? And yeah. I mean, yeah. like even people without regular, regularly acknowledged mental health issues. I know everyone was dealing with a world of yes. hurt during the, the worst months of the pandemic. So, uh, I mean, the, the the topics covered on especially No, and I mean, the subsequent record that's coming out next year, too, I, I knew would strike a chord with people who were willing to listen. Um, I, and I knew it wasn't a good thing that it would be striking a chord. Right. I, I, I just hoped that especially some of the fury that comes out through this one, I I'd hope that people would feel a kinship with it because it's 
It's essentially a rational person trying to reconcile what is happening in their own head and, and reacting in real time to the just barrage of shit that we were all collectively observing and experiencing. Uh, you mentioned, you know, this is really part one of two mm -hmm. albums coming our way. Um, and this album, uh, you know, we close with the song Unresponsive, uh, which is from a confrontational perspective, maybe one of the most fierce uh, on the album. Mm -hmm. One that definitely stuck with me uh, the most when I was listening to it. Um, doesn't necessarily give this part one of the story a happy ending. Oh um, no, not at all. Not at no, all. No, um, so, so maybe- It's actually funny because this, this track is already obviously out. It came out last Friday and it's, it's entertaining because I've been trying to deal with my own thoughts on how people are reacting to it because obviously it has a video and the performance itself and the video come across as extremely irate yeah. but the lyrical content itself is deeply sad yeah so, so maybe my me, first question me, would be should i be worried right now are you yeah okay? i mean i i <laughs> i think i think i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> no it's funny because my brother was commenting on uh the fact that like a lot of the people that in music that uh, others have classically said like oh they're so angry like I'm scared of them and that sort of thing and he was he was commenting in, in an entertaining way that that I'm actually someone you should worry a lot more about than any of them. <laughs> I, I can converse properly and socially with, with charisma, too. It's considerably more sociopathic the way I am. <laughs> and then we have the quote of the day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and I know how to fight, so not, not <laughs> like I'm like calling that on, but like I, that, that is one of my major, was one of my major problems throughout the pandemic is, is one of my major tools of combating depression is that I, I train Muay Thai like yeah. five, six days a week. <laughs> I I wasn't able to do that for a long time and then when I came back to it in 2021 that community fell apart because it is just littered with insane conspiracy theories and tons of anti-vax and anti-mask and COVID denial like it was just the community fell apart so I don't really have the, the team that I used to work with anymore which is yeah. I mean, I've been dealing with, with kind of mourning the loss of that for the last year or two. When we were in the midst of the pandemic, um, there was already this massive pressure on people dealing with the concept that you're going through this. And I yeah. struggled with mental health issues. You did. Everybody did. And, and you mentioned that, like, you know, everybody relates to these songs maybe more than in the past. But now you've got this second wave of of shit to deal with because not only am I isolated in my basement anymore, I'm now out to go out again, depending on where you are in the world. Um, yeah. But there's just so many people that I don't feel 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 close with anymore. Is that an yeah. underrated emotion that that we should tackle better? I and I don't know how to honestly like I yeah. and and that it's funny because. I, I kind of address those kinds of feelings on the next record because for the most part, I mean, unresponsive aside, unresponsive was actually one of the last songs that was written as the the whole group of material. Okay. But for the most part, it's divided into stuff that was written in 2020 and 2021. Um, 2020 being largely material that I had to write on my own because I couldn't get together. And then as we started being able to get together as a band again, we started collaborating. And that's where most of the, the subsequent Void record that will come out next year is a much more collaborative effort that okay. then also deals with some of the shit that we all faced in 2021, which arguably was an even more fun year. Uh, when I was listening to your album, there were two records that for me kind of felt like a callback to from other bands. Uh, number one, The Fragile from Nine Inch Nails from the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. 
And then also from Mayhem, Grand Declaration of War, uh, which was, I think, 1999 or 2000. And what these albums kind of have in common is like they build up to this chaotic moment. And then the second half of that album is kind of like dealing with the aftermath of that. And when mm -hmm. you mentioned the tie, it's kind of like for me that change in the music together with, uh, what is it, uh, not, not My Fault and Lost Grip, that drastically changed the vibe all of a sudden. And, and kind yeah. of pulled the carpet underneath our feet, if you will. Um, was that then really proactively created in such a way? And should we expect more of these turns on the second album? Probably. Um, ultimately, like with, with both records worth of material, we wrote them with the aesthetic in mind that they would all fit together as one album. So we okay. didn't, we wanted to make a conscious effort of not really repeating any of the same feelings at all throughout the whole batch of material. Um, and then we were forced to split them into two records that I, I feel like the, the way we did that was, it actually came together very organically and I think works very well. But It'll, it'll be cool to see how people react to listening to No, and then when Void comes out next year, listening to that, and then trying to fit the two together and see how they feel about it as a whole. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah it's very much, it's, it's, a, it's an experience of what we've all collectively been through for the last, at this point, two, well, two and a half years, but it was written and finished like January 2021, so it's basically like that, that two-year capsule. Um, Although I think some of the 2021 sentiments, I mean, that stuff will be resounding for the next few years anyway. So it, it's not like that's going to go anywhere. You guys bring, you know, let's call it, and I mean this as a compliment, chaotic, artful noise rock uh, or noise core or what have you. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, there's when you start looking for, oh, influences or potential inspirations, that listing can become quite long and quite diverse. Um, that also means, and we've seen that in the past, that you guys fit a lot of bills. You can play in a lot of different festivals with different packages, different uh, bands. But that sometimes can also be annoying uh, because oh, yeah. I can imagine that you've more than once played for an audience that was like, well, I don't quite get it or um, you know you might be too hard for for one audience too soft for another audience what's that been like for you guys um, I mean it can be very alienating we've done tours like we toured with uh, Norma Jean and Vanna which was a very hardcore tour and those people absolutely hated us we did not go over well on that tour um, conversely we've done a full U.S. tour with a band like Russian Circles, where I think their fans, although very respectful, I think were kind of lukewarm on us. Mm -hmm. um, we toured with yeah bands like Torch. We went over pretty well with um, more of a death metal thing like Revocation. Their fans seem to adopt us, I think, the most, yeah. which is funny because a lot of the time, death people in the like thrash metal and death metal don't really care for noise rock, but I think. The sheer intensity of what we did won a lot of people over. Yeah, um, which is very bizarre to say that they were the most open-minded crowds because historically death metal fans are like, no, I want death metal. Everything yeah. else sucks. So, <laughs> yeah, I, and I mean the last bunch of tours that we've done have have been us headlining because no one wants to tour with us. So, if anything. If we can really market ourselves as something worth coming out to see and putting together a tour package that makes sense for us, that's that's kind of the ultimate way to do it. And I hope that we are starting to flirt with that level of popularity where that works, because that yeah. honestly, that's what we're trying to hit is music fans who like the full spectrum of extreme music, including yeah. anything from jazz to indie rock, like anything that can be viewed, I don't necessarily mean like extreme music in terms of like metal influence or whatever, but like things that conjure up extreme feelings. Yeah. Because I know a, a lot of jazz I think is more extreme than any fucking metal that's out there, so. Yeah, yeah. To talk about the newer addition to the team whose sound definitely helps you guys with that challenging approach. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You got Catherine on board now, not a stranger to the band. Um, no. Was working with you already from a different capacity. Um, nevertheless, for somebody to come into a band that has that has such you know your history now already, and 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 and, and you know don't want to make you feel old, but I will use the word legacy. Uh, yeah. um, you know, with with already seven albums before she joined. Um, given also the uniqueness of her of her instrumentation, right, the saxophone, keys, and stuff like that, that can be quite even for somebody that already knows you. Um, that could be pretty challenging and, and daunting to to join such an explosive, uh, you know, mix of music. Um, what? How did that go to to kind of bring her into the band and, and make sure she felt part of the team? Um, I mean, from a collaboration standpoint, I think when we were working with her on the left record, we felt a, a level of kinship with her that we knew we, we got along with her quite well. Um, the biggest problem was that she played on three songs on that record and we were only going to include two of them as part of the live show. So it right. didn't really make sense to bring a whole new member out for two songs. Um, so with that in mind of her having an interest in continuing to play with us um i started experimenting with synthesizers in 2019 and kind of dove all in in 2020 you actually mentioned nine inch nails earlier and yeah for a good deal of the earlier part of the pandemic i like deep dove on them like i was obsessively listening to nine inch nails for some reason it just it my brain just got stuck and i i went like pretty deep into working with a few synthesizers and as a result it's it's all over these new works and she plays synth she plays piano she plays guitar so i pitched to her like would you be interested in doing all these things in the band and she was all in so she actually didn't play all uh, all the synth on the record like there's a bunch of them that i wrote and like there was no point in me teaching her because a lot of them were soundscapey things that i'd like either pre-recorded yeah. or just created a patch so uh, it's been entertaining trying to teach her an entire set's worth of music in preparation of all these shows coming up because uh it's we've made her job the hardest job in the band for sure because she's jumping from instrument to instrument exactly, patch yeah. to patch and oh i it's it's a nightmare and, and the the thing i kind of take for granted is a lot of these songs like shane scott and i or at least since scott joined eight years ago he's been playing them for eight years and some of these shane and i have been playing for what like 12 13 years like yeah we could do these in our sleep so she's needing to not only learn these songs but try to get them to like that level where we're all at the same level of comfort like thanks guys <laughs> So with all that in mind, you know, what should uh, the fans keep their eyes open for, uh, for for um, upcoming uh, shows and other activity uh, of Ken Mode? I mean, we've got four Canadian, Western Canadian shows coming up in September with Wild Creature and Mares of Thrace. And then we're doing three weeks in the US um, with Frail Body, who's a really, really great uh, I want to say screamo band because I'm an old person, but I guess people call them it scrams now to okay. distinguish from the commercialized version of screamo. Um, but we're doing three weeks with them and have a whole bunch of really, really sick regional bands that are hopping on when we come through their area yeah, that yeah. we kind of handpick to make this tour as cool as we possibly can. Um, other than that, we're trying to aim on doing something in March and then hopefully some more dates in the summer. And then some more dates the next fall. We're just we're trying to roll this out in a way that we can actually manage it concurrently with our day jobs without having everything yeah. completely collapse. And like the ultimate goal with this stuff is is to have fun playing music again. So I, I hope we can do that and not overwhelm ourselves in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I do hope that um, it'll be possible for you to have fun playing these songs that channel all that negativity that you had to go through um and that it's it gives you a catharsis not ptsd um yeah i mean generally speaking i'm pretty good at detaching from the emotion of the art once it's finished okay. like the actual act of writing it can be 
kind of miserable when I'm actually like writing lyrics, but after they're done, the words are almost meaningless to me. Okay. Which is, I don't know why. I know for some people it's like a, a big deal to go through performing songs all the time, and for me it, it I sometimes will remember the, the the memories that caused the words, but I do it with a, a relative lack of feeling. Which leads back to the sociopathy that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Um, all that said and done, I want to thank you for opening up and, and, and answering some of the questions I had today and uh, you know sharing a little bit of that insight. I want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, no worries. It. And uh, I wish you guys all the best with the with part one of this release, let's yeah. call it that way. And then I hope to see you guys uh, on the road with uh, some cool other bands supporting you guys. Here's thank hoping. you so much. Thank, and thank you, so you for much. having me. I appreciate it. watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel